In this video, we'll be working with Visual Basic User Forms and the Spin Button Control. To get started, go ahead and open up a brand new workbook in Microsoft Excel, either 2007 or 10, and go to your Developers tab. Select Visual Basic. The first thing that we're going to do is add a user form. So go on and select the drop down arrow and click User Form. Inside your user form, you'll have a toolbox that loads up. If for any reason your toolbox window is not loading up, go ahead and go to your view and select toolbox. The controller we're going to be working with is going to be the spin button. I'm going to add that to my user form. You can size it to your likings. And whenever you have it set to your preference, then go ahead and add a text box. And the first thing that we're going to do on the spin button is select it and we're going to look at our properties. If for any reason your properties window is not showing up, select view, do property windows. Now on the spin button control, you're going to notice there's a min and a max. We can do 0 through 100 or let's just change 0 to 50. And what you want to do is set an initial value. The initial value, let's just say we want, we want it halfway, we'll put it at 25. And then on the spin button, double click that. It should take you to spin button one underscore change. Let's just do text box one dot text is equal to, and then we'll do the spin button one dot value. So if we were to play this right now and we move through the arrows, the text box changes. I'm actually going to want the spin button to be bigger. Now, if you notice, so when we do play it, text box originates as um, starts off as being blank. And if to change that, go double click your user form anywhere with the exception of a control, and you'll go to uh, this user form dot click. But what you want to do, what you want to do is go to user form on the right, the procedures. You want to go to the load. In Visual Basic, uh, for access, that's going to be initialize. And so from here, we're going to do text box one dot text is equal to spin button one dot value. And we play it out, and it starts off with the initial value. So the next thing that you're going to want to do for your specific application in the text box or in the spin button, I'm going to double click the spin button. If you want something to be happening to your your code anytime this button is changed, then in that case you would either write it here on spin button change, or since you are setting the text box value to change every time the spin button value change, you can do an event or a procedure when the text box is changed. So every anytime the message box is changed, you can do let's say message box hello and text box one dot text. So we play this. We're going to get the initial pop up of hello 25 because the text box is changing, but now every time you change it, that value changes. Just to go one step further, I'm going to take off the text box change. You could always do something with your workbook, like sheet one that rows and you can do spin button one dot value do a colon and again spin button one dot value dot select and this should select the row for us let me play this out there you go, 24, 23, 22. And I'll select the row in the background that we have selected. We should get an error though. Uh, well, the, yeah, that's what I was thinking. We should get an error once we get to zero. So you just want to put in an if statement here where as long as the value is greater than one to go on and select the row. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.